Hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. So today I am currently outside here at Dale Hodges Park here in Calgary, which is right next to the beautiful Bow River. Yeah, and I just thought I would go out, do a walk. And while I'm at it, I thought I might as well test the Yashica MF1, uh, which is this other <laughs> 35 millimeter plastic film camera that I have. So this one came preloaded with film, which is like a 400 ISO with a 24 exposure. Um, if you're familiar with film photography, Yashica used to be this manufacturer of cameras and lenses and they used to be like really big back in like the 80s. They even worked with Carl Zeiss to develop the Contax line of cameras but they've since been out of business and recently uh, in a Kickstarter campaign there's a new company that's calling themselves Yashica or at least they got access to the brand and they develop these kinds of cameras, which is just your typical plastic cameras. Um, but we'll test it and see if it's any good um, and just follow along. Again, the Ashika MF1 is a reusable 35mm film camera that's similar to disposable plastic cameras. It has a 31mm plastic lens with a fixed aperture of f11 and shutter speed of 1 120th of a second. If you're one of my lovely subscribers, you probably know that I have a growing collection of plastic film cameras now, some of which include the Kodak M38, M35, Lomography Simple Use Film Camera, and Double Film Show Camera. The Ishika MF1 is not that different from these reusable cameras, however, I think it most closely resembles the Lomography Simple Use Film Camera. As you can see in here, the two cameras have the same size with very similar body shape. The main difference on the front is that the Ashika MF1 has an easier to use toggle compared to the simple use camera's press and hold button for operating the flash. The top part also looks similar, with the only difference being that the Ashika MF1's red light signal for the flash is on its backside. The bottom part with the battery compartment and film rewind crank also looks the same. As you might expect, loading film on the Yashica MF1 is the same with the Lomography Simple Use Film Camera. You first open the back of the camera by toggling the door lock on the side and then set the film counter wheel back to E. Pull the film rewind crank out and rotate it so that this tooth on the film take-up spool is visible. For this demo, I'm using a roll of Lomography Color Negative 400 film. Slide the film into the film chamber until you hear it click in place. And then, drag the film leader and place a second sprocket hole into the tooth on the take-up spool. You can then close the back door. Then, rotate the film rewind crank towards the direction drawn over it or counterclockwise until you can't turn it anymore and the film counter shows 36 or the maximum number of shots in your roll. To take a photo, turn the film advance wheel several times until it stops and you hear it click. And then press the shutter button on the top. Be sure to do this while pointing the camera at your subject and composition, of course. <laughs> Like I said in the intro, I decided to test this camera while I was at Dale Hodges Park, which is a small park next to the Bow River in Northwest Calgary. It's a little hidden from the hustle bustle of the city and has some nice walking paths by the river as well as bike paths. <laughs> this was actually just after going to the dentist, so my face was still a little numb when I was taking these videos. As you can see from these first few photos, the camera produces soft images with a noticeable vignetting. I like how the Ashika 400 film renders colors though. My guess is that it's a rebranded Kodak film like the Kodak Ultramax 400.
So this camera is fairly easy to use, just like the other film plastic cameras that I have. You just frame your composition using the viewfinder and then snap the photo. The image will be in focus as long as your subject is more than a meter away, and the image will generally have a good enough exposure when used in sunny conditions. Use the flash when indoors and in low light. Oh, and make sure that nothing is blocking your lens like what I did with the camera strap in this photo. The camera produces an ugly lens flare, so I wouldn't use it in direct light. Try to always shoot with the sun behind you. So yeah, um, this camera is not as sharp and has a noticeable vignette, which is typical of cameras with plastic lenses. Although I must say that my Kodak M35 and the double film show cameras renders sharper images. Build quality wise, I kind of like the matte silicone finishing. It makes the camera feel more premium compared to say Lomography simple use cameras bare plastic. However, this coating tend to attract oil. So if you have sweaty palms or oily skin, or just use moisturizers in general, uh, this camera will get greasy really fast, which is kind of gross. This camera doesn't feel as secure as my other plastic cameras too. It has these misaligned gaps that make it look like the camera doesn't fully close. Um, so you kind of worry about film light leaks. Uh, and most of its parts, like the film door lock and the film counter, uh, feels flimsy. It also doesn't have that satisfying clicky sound when you advance the film. Uh, it just feels like, or sounds like, I'm grading something. Can you hear that? Which doesn't feel as good. So yeah, I guess I'm not really a fan of this camera. I'd sooner recommend the Kodak M35 double film show camera and even the Lomography simple use camera before this one. While it's very similar to the simple use camera, that one is a bit cheaper and a bit more fun to use. I mean, listen to this. You can't deny that this camera has a more satisfying sound when you're using it. 
The Ishika does feel a bit more premium though because of the silicone matte finishing. As for the Ishika Color Negative 400, it renders colors well and I like the photos that I got from it. It's very similar to my results when I use a roll of Kodak Ultramax 400 or Lomography Color Negative 400. That said, those films are easier to acquire and have 36 exposures compared to this one which is only 24 exposures. And that's it! Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you liked it. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you all in the next one. Cheers!